Conservative MP Gérard Dettel wants former Quebec Premier Jean Charest to run for the party's leadership, as first reported by the Globe and Mail. Currently, only Ontario MP Pierre Polyev is publicly in the running, but a number of people are said to be considering it, including Charest and former leadership contenders Leslin Lewis and Peter McKay. Brampton Mayor Patrick Brown is also considering a bid. Gerard Daltel joins us now here in Ottawa. Hi, Mr. Daltel. Good to see you. Thank you for making the time. My pleasure and my privilege. In provincial politics, Mr. Charest was your clear opponent. Now you want him to lead your party on the federal stage. What has changed for you? Because I know him. I know him pretty well. Before being involved in politics in 2008, I've been a political journalist in the National Assembly for six years. So during six years, I had the privilege to watch him very closely. As you know, political journalists are very close to the politician to see exactly what is their challenges and what is their also strength. So I, I saw him as a premier of Quebec. I saw him official leader of the opposition in Quebec. And I was one of his opponents for four years. And I was leader of my party for three years. So I know him quite well. And I know exactly that this is exactly the kind of person that we want to have in our party. First of all, because he's the one who can convince people who are not exactly on their on his side to, to be with them. I am the living proof of that. He's the one who can unite our party, who can rally all the different groups that we have in our party under our big tent to work all together. He have proved that without a shadow of a doubt during all those, all those years involved in politics for, 20 year, for 28 years as the leader of his own party for 20 years. And also, I think is the one who can attract Canadians to join us and to form the government. From coast to coast, we need a leader who will please Canadians, who will attract Canadians to our policy, and Jean Charest is the man for that. I do want to ask you about that last point you made in a second, but you know as well as I do, the second that this article by my colleague Bob Fife came out about your endorsement, supporters of Pierre Polyev were quick to look back on previous comments that you had made, and they were pointing to a write-up, for example, uh, of uh, comments you made when you were in provincial politics, where you called Mr. Charest the, quote, godfather of the Liberal Party. You said uh, that the Liberals are there for their own pockets, people are there for their own personal ambitions, are there for salaries, they are so far from the reality of Quebecers. You know, that's a very different way of speaking about Jean Charest than, than the, the, the answer that you just gave me. Uh, supporters of Pierre Polyev would probably ask you, you know, do you truly believe this and, and how can your opinion change so much over this number of years? Well, those, those comments were made 12 years ago and this is just part of the story because the full story is, yes, I said that and I apologize because it has been a big mistake. It's not the way to address politics in my life. And I did that mistake. I recognize it and I also apologize. 10 years ago, not 10 days ago, because you know, I support him right now. I did it 10, 10, days, 10 years ago. I apologize privately to him and very, very open mind. I, I made apologize in the National Assembly. I can quote you exactly what I said on November the 1st, 2012 at 16 o'clock, 44 minutes precisely in the House of, in the National Assembly. I recognize that it was a mistake. You know, there is a thousand good way to focus and to attack an opponent. I used the wrong one. I recognize that and I apologize. Okay, let me- This let is me... the full story. Okay, understood. Let's, let's go back to today. Uh, have you spoken to Mr. Charest about this? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, I spoke about that uh, 10 years ago. No, no. I sorry. I, I mean about wanting him to run for the leader. And what I'm trying to get at here is we've got a number of candidates who have not yet officially declared. I know many are waiting for the rules. Is that the case, uh, Mr. Charest? Is he waiting to see what the leadership rules will be? How close is he to making this official? Well, he will make his announcement when he will feel comfortable with everything. And I think it's part of the of the, the, the reflection that he should have, who can support him. And we have seen last week, seven uh, pro prominent conservative members, some of them member of parliament and some others, uh, chief of staff of a cabinet minister and, ca for, and a, a cabinet premier of provinces. So there is a lot of support uh, for him. I Yesterday, I said publicly that, yes, I want him to run. And as a former opponent, I am the living proof that yes, this gentleman can attract people to our party. And I'm very pleased to see if he decided to run, to see him back in the federal level because everybody will rec realize and recognize that yes, it took the conservative party in 1993. It was everything, but this, it was absolutely destroyed and he rebuilt it. So uh, I think he has sh have shown without a shadow of a doubt, strong leadership on many issues. And I do appreciate that. And more than ever, we need someone with experience like him 28 years in politics, obviously there is some bagage, but there is also 
experiences. And that's exactly what we need, especially when we look at the international challenges that we have in front of us right now. And, and there are certainly many. You, you made a point there at the end, though, about experience and, and there coming some baggage along with that. And I do want to ask you, because in the, in the article in the Globe and Mail, you said that, for example, Mr. Charest will soon be addressing his role with Huawei. And, and that certainly, you know, that, and, and our viewers will be familiar with it, but, but Huawei, of course, is a, is a company that, that your party and, and many other members of parliament have heavily criticized for its role in the Meng Wanzhou affair. And, uh, you know, the, the accusation from people who are supporting other potential candidates towards Mr. Charest is that essentially he's lining the pockets, lining his pockets with money from this company that played, some, you know, played some sort of role in the detainment of, of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver. Uh, what could he possibly say to Canadians that would allay their concerns about that? Is the best one to answer to that question, not me, because he knows. But exactly what has he what told he you did. then, and Mr. Deltel? What, what has well, he told you? <laughs> what, what he told me is what I've what I've said to Mr. Fife yesterday in the Globe and Mail that he has never, never put any Canadian interest in in jeopardy in his per private life as a lawyer, and also is as something to he will have something to to say in few days, and we will see it. But I have full confidence of him on that. I can quote you can quote me on that. And, and let me ask you, because other candidates who are thinking about running uh, have talked about the rules associated with this. And by that, I mean, will they have enough time to sell memberships and will the uh, election of a new leader you know, not be just a few months away? Are those things that, from your vantage point, uh, do matter? Or has Mr. Charest told you they do matter to him? Like, would he like to see more than three months, for example, to sell memberships? Well, uh, on my this is my personal point of view. I speak on behalf of neighbor, anybody else than myself on that situation. I hope that uh, we will have plenty of time to address it. But you know, I will have full confidence of the committee that has been established by our party to exactly uh, design the rules, and we will live with those rules. This is my personal point of view. Obviously, if the election, if the, the choice of the leader is in April, well, it will be a little bit too short. But I don't think that we are going there. Um, as far as I'm concerned, personally, in in June it will be a, a good date. If if this is the decision of the committee, I will let the, the committee do, do his homework. I will not yield against the uh, the referee. It's not my style, but I think that uh, I have full confidence of this committee of 21 members of this party. And uh, we will see it and we'll adjust our uh, strategy if there is something to do about that. And and if so, so do I take from that by adjusting your strategy? Like, is Mr. Charest, do you think, in? Like, if you were to make a bet right now for our audience who's very interested in this subject, would you, what would you know, how much money would you put on Mr. Charest? running. <laughs> Well, it's not exactly my style to put money. I'm too cheap for that. Well, I'm a you know. <laughs> oh my God, what did I say? Anyway, uh, well, no, I don't. I don't want to play that that game with you with all my respect. But I think that yes, I think if Mr. Sharia decides to run, it will be a tremendous and very interesting leadership race because I have a lot of respect to Mr. Poiliev, as you know, he decided to run. He announced it three weeks ago, and I have a lot of respect for him. I know him quite well. I worked with him for the last six and a half years. I've been seatmate of me in the House of Commons, who have plenty of great occasion to speak and to chat all together. He's a great parliamentarian, a very terrific uh, speaker, and uh, it will be an interesting race, yes. If uh, Mr. Charest decides to run, that will be very interesting for all Canadians, and just watch us, okay. like we could say. <laughs> okay, Mr. Daltel. Thank you very much for making the time this evening. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Bye-bye. And we'll have a lot more coming up. on. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.